What's up everybody? I'm Lyle Sid and welcome back to Ace Navigation. This week we're talking about how to hear go. So if you remember from last season's Ace Navigation, I did a video about prayer. So for a little contest, if you guys want to just go back to that video and watch that, it, it actually applies a lot to what we're going to be talking about today. So a main inspiration for this How to Hear God segment, I wanted to go back to the Old Testament, mainly 1 Samuel. Look into chapter 3, verses 4 through 10. So let's do a little bit of reading to start off. Uh, then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again Samuel, and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again, the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. So... The story is basically Samuel is this miracle child from Hannah, and as a thank you, Hannah gave Samuel to the prophet at the time, Eli, so that he could serve the Lord. And the main premise of this is that Samuel did not yet know the Lord, but the Lord was speaking to him. And this can happen even today. So for this segment, is mainly for us as God's children, when we're praying or asking to hear his will or to know our purpose or just any questions we might have, how do you hear God in today? Since today we're obviously not in Bible times, here are some three tips and tricks on how to hear God in your day-to-day -day life. Now the first way is actually kind of obvious yet underrated and overlooked most of the time, which is, you guessed it, reading the Bible. Which people can say, Maya, that's obvious, of course I'm going to read the Bible. But actually, the Bible is the Word of God. God spoke to all the authors of every book in the Bible, so it's essentially His Word. And Peter quotes it in John chapter 6, verse 68, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. God spoke and breathed the Word, and He made this, which is essentially a historical instructional manual on how to live your life. The problem is it's very thick and there's a lot in there especially to digest. So a lot of people when they have a problem or situation in their life, they don't know where in the Bible to look for their specific problem. So you just have to learn how to navigate and read the Bible and you can go to friends who are made some more well read or know where specific things are. You take the patience and take the time to learn how to use the Bible as a tool and you can actually hear God helping you and speaking to your specific problem. For trick number two, this goes back to my video from last season. While you're praying and talking to God, meditate. Take those breaks. Let God speak to you in the positive of your conversation that you're supposed to be having with Him as your father and friend. I'm sure most of us, especially college students or students in general, like to have just a to-do list, task. Okay, God, just tell me how to live my life and I'll do it. This is, the, of course, the performing Christian mindset. So you have to be careful. Because God's not a task manager. He's a guiding friend and your father, especially in your parents. So he more wants to guide your life, not tell you what to do essentially, because he wants you to live and to flourish as your own person. But he still has his will, so don't try to push your own agenda. It's this careful balance. So as long as you're feeding that relationship with God, then it'll be easier for you to use that conversation as a means of him speaking to you with the quiet moments. And then the last trick of today is actually just everything else on the outside that's around you, the environment, your other senses. God speaks through nature, other people, and he will tailor his message to your needs. You just gotta pay attention. 
So to close us out, I wanted to give a little story of how God spoke to me using one of these three ways. So last year, for a long time, I was having a lot of trouble in my life, so I was just praying mostly for peace and understanding and what I was going through. And I did this literally probably every day. It was school, it was friends, it was kind of a bit of everything. And I was just praying, God, give me peace. So one day, me and one of my friends, we went hiking on this hill that's close by to the academy. And when we got to the top of the hill, he literally gave me this rock. It said peace on it. It's this purple rock. It was just at the top of the hill. And I'm like, wow really using your environment God and it was it's been a funny story ever since and I think back to that time almost every day how God literally answered my prayers and spoke to me saying hey here's a peace like he could be God's a very funny person a friend he's your parent he's your father he's your closest he's your closest thing that we'll ever have. So to feed that relationship and to hear him, treat him as such. And you both can grow together and with your general community. Because learning how to hear God actually helps you learn how to hear other people and be more in tune to how they're feeling. Well, that's all I got for today. So thank you all. And hope you all have a wonderful week and an awesome fall. What's up, Eight to Nav family? If you made it this far, this is a shameless plug that you should go to the OCF One Stop Shop and sign up so you can be on camera just like me. Because everybody wants to do that. So go sign up, have a great day. Go sign up, Vishon.